Today's lesson is all about genetic algorithms, which are a really cool way to optimize learning in machine learning tasks. If you're not quite sure what this means, imagine you have a problem, which if you just kept on getting random solutions for, you would eventually stumble across one which works. Maybe the problem is a big maze. Say you put a computer cat at the beginning and you tell it, you can take up to 100 steps and each step you can go in any direction you like. Find the box. If the cat guessed completely random routes for all of eternity, or maybe just like a few hours, it would eventually stumble across a correct solution, which got it from the beginning of the maze to the box. But this would take a whole lot of time. What genetic algorithms do is use a survival of the fittest type algorithm to reach the solution much faster. The steps to creating a genetic algorithm include creating an initial population, defining a fitness function, selecting the fittest members of the population, using crossover and mutation to create the next generation, and repeating steps three to four until we're able to solve our problem. Let's jump into an example to learn what all these steps mean and how to implement them. This is Jonathan. Jonathan can take four actions. He can go left, he can go right, he can go up and levitate. Yeah, Jonathan's pretty rad. Or he can go down. Let's see how we can string these controls together to create something called a DNA strand. We'll give Jonathan a string of 14 actions to take, each one randomly selected. Each action can be called a gene, and when the genes are combined in this way, the entire strand is called the DNA. Now, let's drop Jonathan in a park. Jonathan needs to walk through the park to get to work, but if he slips on a banana skin or crashes into a bird, he'll fall and not be able to carry on. Let's see what our Jonathan does with his randomly created DNA. Not the best. Now, you or I could look at this scene and manually create a Jonathan with a better DNA who could easily travel much further unscathed. But what if I can't be bothered to tell Jonathan what to do? I mean, why can't he do all the work while I just watch Netflix? Or what if we were faced with a course which was much more difficult for you or I to manually figure out? Let's devise a genetic algorithm to produce a competent Jonathan. Step one, create an initial population. Let's choose a population of size five and give them each a different DNA created by randomly selecting the genes from the four action options. This is where each of our Jonathans end up. Step two, define a fitness function. Since we want Jonathan to end up exiting the park, let's say the fitness function is calculated by counting the number of steps between Jonathan and his initial position. Step three, select the fittest members of the population. Since our population size is very small, we'll only take the top two Jonathans, but you could choose to select more if your population was larger. Step four, crossover and mutation. In order to create better future Jonathans, we're going to take our fittest members and breed them to produce child Jonathans. So how do we do that? We take the DNA strands from the two parent Jonathans. We then need to decide how we're going to combine them. You can do this in any manner you can think of, as long as you're taking information from both parents to create a child DNA. I'm going to choose to split the DNA strands into three and then randomly choose which Jonathan will pass on their strand of genes from each section. Let's create a new generation of five Jonathans. Great. But we're not quite finished with the child Jonathans. We still need to mutate some of their genes. Why? Because otherwise we can get stuck in local minima. Imagine if by chance our initial population of Jonathans only consisted of left, right, and down actions. Then the best Jonathan could ever do would only be to make it to the first banana, which is only two steps away from the starting point. Jonathan would never make it out of the park because the parents didn't have a jumping gene, so the children would never learn to jump. That's why we need mutation, so that Jonathan can have the opportunity to try new things. If we make our mutation rate too high, Jonathan will explore a lot and won't listen to his parents much, so it will take him a long time to be competent. 
if we make our mutation rate too small, Jonathan will listen very well to both of his parents, so he'll learn fast. But it will take him a long time to change his ways if he's near the local minima. A good mutation rate is fairly small. For this problem, let's choose a mutation rate of 0.1. This means that every gene in the DNA strand has a 10% chance of being replaced with a random gene. Let's mutate all of the child Jonathan genes. Our first child generation is ready for action and we can plop them into the park. All we need to do now is repeat steps 3 to 4 until we find a Jonathan whose DNA allows him to finally exit the park and go to work. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you now understand how genetic algorithms function. Stick around for the next video to learn how to actually program genetic algorithms within Python.